Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Brewing Business Show. This is a space dedicated to the craft beer industry and entrepreneurs who wants to learn more about mindset, health, wealth, business, and of course, beer. I'm your host, Pedro Meneses, and before we start, I just wanna make sure you buckle up, crack open a cold one, and get ready to hear some life-changing information. Cheers. Right now. So welcome back, everybody, to episode 44 of the Brewing Business Show. If this is your first time, be sure to check out the previous episodes don't forget to leave me that review on iTunes so you can help more people to find the show. And I hope you guys are ready for a powerful episode as my guest is not only someone who has been a top performing salesman for over 20 years and can excel in different industries, to now being someone who owns his own insurance brokerage and has created a unique systems to grow his business and also expanded into insurance education and sales skills courses for insurance professionals. So welcome to the show, Brian. It is a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Awesome. Thank you, sir. I, I appreciate it. Now, of course, man, it's, my, it's, it's, it's a great honor, man. I'm, uh, I've seen how much you have grown for the past couple of years, and it's something that I really admire, man, you know, because it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's inspiring to see how, like, how your hard work start paying off, right? And a lot of people think, like, oh, yeah, I've been doing this for a couple of years, but, man, you've been in business, you've been in sales for over 20 years, so yeah. it's been quite of a journey to be where you are right now and start seeing all these fruits of your hard work, man. So, why yeah. don't you take us a little bit back in time and, and, and share a little bit about your story, man, so people can get to know you more? Sure, yeah. Um, well, it all started Thanksgiving week, 1979. Nah. <laughs> 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 um, so let's see. Well, the last five years, I've been in the insurance industry full time. Um, I got into sales pretty much right after, right after high school-ish. I think I was about 20. Um, so my first job out of high school, I was a, an apprentice doing in a print shop, which is not that fun. <laughs> uh, did that for a little while, but then I, I got into sales and that was the first time it, that I, I really enjoyed moving at your own pace. Um, my father worked, he was an engineer at a factory. He did the family man gig, you know, he he always talked right. about get a good job with a good company and you know, benefits and all that stuff. So he was on that uh, hourly salary train because he was thinking from a pr family perspective, you know, pr to protect the loved ones and have that stable thing. But um, he also probably every five to seven years, he, he was either laid off or on strike uh, because he was a union job. So that idea of, you know, protected by the company never really sat with me. But um but about 20 years old, I got into sales and it was commission sales at a music instrument, uh, music instrument company, um, which is no longer in business it's called Mars Music. But that was the first time it was where I can look and set my own goals and start to track my own performance and make write my own paycheck. And that was an incredible turn on for me. And that's when even at a great, really young age, started learning to set goals. Um, you know, seeing the value of hard work truly pay off as opposed to, you know, you're in an hourly or a salary position. You can work harder than the next guy. That's great. But doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get any more money. And you start to see everybody kind of level off to what's considered standard, you know, unless right. you want the guy who wants to get promoted, but everybody kind of, it's like, Hey man, why are you working so hard? We're going to level out to be mediocre. Right. So, um, but from there, I did uh, did that for a little while. Uh, that company ended up kind of going out of business, so I got into cars for a short bit, and then back to retail. I've always kind of loved retail, the 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 structure of retail, because you have some operational pieces that, that go with it, and then you also have the sales structure. And I've always gravitated toward the commission companies, uh, working in those or managing those. So I, I went through different uh, different retailers. Uh, Guitar Center was one of them. Best Buy was one of them. Uh, and Office Max was my last one. I added my insurance license in 2005. I left Best Buy and I was going to take a position. It was a uh, sales manager position with Guitar Center, but it didn't open yet. So I had this mm -hmm. length of time to wait for, to start. So I added my, my insurance license and I hooked up with a company that specializes in the senior market. So I've been actually helping the senior market since 05. Uh, part time until 2015 when I got recruited uh, out of an office in Fort Worth and um, I went to work for them and that was the first full time that I was able to be my own uh, entrepreneur and I just fell in love with that yeah I, I love 
Yeah, I love the structure of retail, but you're always still answering to somebody. You, in some ways, in a lot of ways, it's like your own mini company, a store. So I, it, it's like an MBA course, but live, you know, real right. life MBA stuff. You learn all the you know, P&L and, you know, EBITDA and goal setting and all these different things you would learn going to college to get an MBA, but you're doing it in real time with real customers and real employees. So I love learning that, but I always bumped up against being told no when I wanted to do something and that always bugged me. So when I got into the idea of insurance full time in 2015, I, I did as much um, much as I could. That's awesome, man. I was not gonna, not gonna let it down. Right. No, but you know, you mentioned something very important. You know, it's always, for me, it was the same. And when I got into entrepreneurship, it was an exciting step for me because mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, my whole life, man, I never learned how to listen to anybody. You know, I always hated it. <laughs> even, even since I was a little kid, you know, I never understood, you know, because everybody in school, my teacher, my parents, everybody was like, you need yep. to listen to everybody else. I fuck off. I don't need to listen to nobody if I don't want to, <laughs> you know? But I learned that later in life. But you mentioned something very important, man, when, uh, when, you, when you were in your 20s and then you start getting into the sales and all that stuff. Uh -huh. and, and I'm sure that uh, your dad kind of like, like you were saying, your dad was like more into getting something more secure because he was a family man, right? He yep. needed to take care of their family. But, you know, man, when I remember when I was, your, I was 20 and I tried to get my first sales job, my dad really talk to me out of it like he okay. literally brought me yep. down like really bad even i went to pitch him one of our products so he could help me and he told me yeah. get the fuck out of here you know that's how supportive yeah. he was on my entrepreneurship <laughs> journey but i'm sure you you deal with some of that uh, opposition from yeah. your own family and it's something that a lot of entrepreneurs especially right now people that are in between that position of, of keeping their job or making the jump to entrepreneurship how yeah. do you dealt with that stuff in that moment when you were 20 years old and you had that opposition from your own family? Yeah. So, um, my dad's advice was that, but I will say, um, he was always very supportive of whatever I did. And, uh, I gave in, I came in and I, I and I was making money. So, right. um, you, you can't argue with the success. Now my dad passed away in 05. So he doesn't, you know, he's not seeing what, what things are like now, but he was right. always very supportive of the idea of do it yourself, build your own thing. So he understood that about me. Uh, so anytime that I wanted to do something, he was there for advice. I remember when, so I, at, I was about 23 or 24, I was with a company and uh, they had a program to, I, I was the I was a top performing sales manager at this company in DFW and they had an, a, a position where I can go to the largest store in the company. And it was a program where I would go there for a year, manage that store under the guise of the guide of someone else. It was a, basically I would do that for a year. Then I would get my own flat out, my own, my own location somewhere else. Right. Now um, I was, I did that from late Oh three to Oh four. But when I moved up there, uh, that was from moving from Dallas to Tulsa. We talked every day, he and I, and partly because, you know, I was, I was grown and gone, but he was also that support mechanism to, you know, tell you how your day went. And he would give me some advice uh, on different things, never advice on uh, certain business pieces. It was always advice on people and people management, how to, how to operate with people. But right. he was very supportive of that, even though it was a completely different avenue than what he took. Right. Absolutely. I mean, oh, that's great. You know, because I know some of us had to take extreme decisions, you know, like in my case, I had to pack all my shit and leave my country seven years ago, yeah. you know, because that was what I needed to do in order to be away <laughs> from my own family. So I could find myself and develop myself as an entrepreneur, you know, and like you said, right. it's like an MBA in real life. Right. And a lot of people are scared of that, but tell us a little bit more about okay. those, like the first six or 12 months when you decided, okay, fuck this, I'm going on my own, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't have a, it's not quite as drastic as change as what you're talking about. I mean, <laughs> Dallas to Tulsa is not the same thing, but definitely within the same country. <laughs> um, when I, so when I got into cars, I really started getting into the self-improvement stuff. I, I, Ziegler, uh, Stephen Covey. I remember, so my daughter was born in a four, June of 04. So I actually, when I left to go to Tulsa and take that position, my, um, my, her mother was already pregnant. So we found out after I was already going, but, right. uh, I, I remember tapes and CDs from Ziegler, 
Stephen Covey. And so I would drive on my days off from Tulsa da back down to Dallas uh, to be with my daughter for a couple of days and then go back up. And those trips back and forth, I was diving heavy into the self-help stuff. Uh, Marcus Buckingham, if you've ever done the Strengths Finder series, that's a fantastic uh, group of books. And so I was diving really heavy into that and that turned it on to, okay, I'm going to take these skills and improve myself and take that to the team. So when I went to that, uh, that spot, and this was a, a very large store, it was the physically largest store in, in the organization, it had three departments in the same building, three stories. Wow. Um, we, did a we did a lot of volume and I was managing 40 to 50 sales guys, commissioned sales guys, you know, sales dogs. I guess yeah. you <laughs> And these were, some were younger, some were older, and I, I needed to have a, it, it was a, an opportunity to learn how to manage and inspire and teach people of many different ages. I had guys in their 20s. I had guys in their 60s. Uh, I had a few women. It wasn't just guys. I say guys, but ha I had a, had a few women. Right. Um, and it was amazing. And it was not a long, long period of time I was there, but that was some of my my best times as, as a sales leader and a store manager was, was that group. Cause we were commission. People are, you, there's a lot of competition, you know, as you yeah. know, you know, you got a leaderboard of 40 people, there's the top guys and then there's the bottom guys and then the guys in the middle. So you want to get the guys in the middle to sell more. You want right. to get the guys in the bottom to either bump up to adequate what's adequate for them or to go mm -hmm. away. So, right. I mean, you, you had to, it was a, it was a, you had to learn that individualization for people. Like what, what worked for one guy wasn't going to work for the other 39 people. So that was a beautiful opportunity for me to learn how to inspire and manage those people. And a lot of those skills I still use today with, I have a small, much smaller group now. So right. my own office, we started, I mentioned in 2015, getting an insurance. So my own office here came in March of last year, but, um, those same skills I was using when I had an old office about, you know, 15 to 20 guys there. Wow. Skills, man. That's something that a lot of people don't like to talk about because, you know, to develop skills, it takes time and a lot of effort, but yep. you were mentioning how those, because you, you said you were listening to six cylinder dri driving from Tulsa to the DFW, right? So that's yep. like a five, six hours drive at least, right? Uh, yeah, it was about four hours. So right. Just to give you an idea how long of a book uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is, it would take me driving to and from, and I would just barely finish it. Right. <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> wow. Like eight or nine hours of, of talking, and it's, it's a long book. That's insane. But, you know, the reason why I brought it about the skills yeah. is because – you know, man, in 2021, nobody wants to develop skills. Everybody wants to just find that secret uh, to mm -hmm. like unlock the millions of dollars and being successful and hire the cars and all that kind of bullshit, you know, which mm -hmm. is great. I'm not saying it's not bad, but uh, based on your experience and everything that you've been gone through, man, like right mm -hmm. now you own your own business, uh, yep. you're growing uh, extremely fast and, and you're doing a great things in your life. How much you will contribute to your success today to all those skills you were developing 10, 15 years ago, man? Uh, I think it, 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 it was as important as a foundation is to a skyscraper. Right. I'm looking out my, I'm at a fourth floor window. I'm looking out the window, looking at these buildings and going, okay, these wouldn't, they wouldn't stand if they had nothing to stand on. So um, that, what I learned in, in that early on and in my early 20s, learning how to manage people and not only having sales success and then learn, turning that into uh, the team success. That's a foundation that I still use those pieces that even some of the same spreadsheets and some of the same sales materials uh, today, I was um, developing a insurance training course. We can talk about that a little bit later, but uh, yeah. some of the same stuff I went and put in there, I pulled back from those old documents that I've had for, for years. Cause it doesn't change. It right. doesn't change. Just uh, what's that saying? Uh, the, the 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 knowledge is the same, just like the method. What really changes is not it's just yeah. the same foundational stuff that can be used across any industry, you know. And that's the reason why I like to bring people like you in this show because, okay. yeah, this is for entrepreneurs. I have this as dedicated as a craft industry, but man, any, anybody listening to this can take anything of the things that you're sharing right now and implement them in their business. You know, like the same thing that I have implemented for craft beer industry for craft breweries, and the same thing I'm implementing right now to generate leads in real estate, and right. vice versa. You know, so mm -hmm. it is incredible what happens 
happen to you just stick to those from, from that foundation that is necessary to grow a business. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also got at that time, um, John Maxwell, one right. Of my, one of my favorite books is develop the leader within you. And if you, if you look in a, through that list, actually that books, that book spawned two other books. He has developed the leaders within you. That's personal development. And he have developed the leaders around you and uses those same skills to grow other leaders. But he actually spawned a book off from the first one called the five levels of leadership. Cause he talked about that in, in the first book. And if you go through that pattern, that's when your team really starts to grow. So I dived into that and he had a workbook series to go with it. So the first leadership foundation is your position. There's a certain amount of respect the position itself has to uh, brings because you literally can fire them. Right. But if, if you stay there too long, you're not developing any, anybody. The risk of firing somebody will only last I mean, a very short period of time. I wow. mean, less, probably 90 days or less with somebody. Um, the second part is you need to actually get to know them. So just because your position is one thing, then you actually need to get to know the, what things about them and that personal connection. Now we, you know, now we're getting to know each other and we're becoming, I wouldn't say friendly, but you know, you're, they know you care. Right. The old saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. So by getting to know things about them, their family. So when they come in for the day, as opposed to going, here's your task list for today. Hey, Pedro, how's it going? How's Kayla? How's the family? Hey, is your dad doing okay? You know, those things like that, that becomes now you know you care about them. The next thing you do is if you have, is the, the team itself, the performance of the group is level three. So if they see you knock it out of the park, they see how well you do, or even now your impact on the organization, we are all growing. Yeah. Now you've earned clout. Like it, it, that provides validation for what, okay, if I listen to Brian, what he says, I can see that it works and I can see it works on the other guys. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do this too. It, it gives you that validation for, right. uh, for the leadership skills there. So sorry, my phone's ringing. One second. Let me mute this. Okay. So you have like um, a radar in there or something, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got to mix my ringtones so I can know which ones, which that was my office VIP and my cell phone sounds different. Um, so uh, after that, you have the actual development of the person. So if, if what you're doing and the skills that you, if you could invest, not only you got to know them and what you do, it works for the team, your systems, your, whatever you're, you're applying works for the team. If you then take another point to develop them personally. So uh, one guy, his name was Buddy. He was kind of skating by, you know, maybe making a couple of grand a month, but he definitely had aspirations to do more. Right. So that was someone that kind of, you know, when he was one of the younger guys in the group and it became, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put time and develop this guy. You know, the guys that have been doing it for 10 years and they're rocking and they're making six figures, that's cool. And they're doing their thing. You can kind of let them, you support those guys, but you know, you kind of let them do their thing, but right. buddy needed help. So we, we set some goals and you set, you set, we had goals that we set and then we, we had markers. Okay, but when we go start doing this, so every week, every month, and we started, you know, working together and giving him more personal one on one, and his income is far higher range to go. So if he goes from making 3000 a month to 5000 a month, right, you know, he's gonna love you. So that that connection, the more people you can have in your group like that, then you will just have people that will go to bat absolute battle for you. And then the right. fifth, yeah, the fifth leadership level level is like, it's called personhood. That's like, Martin Luther King, Jesus, Mother Teresa type level where you're, or maybe Ziegler, where right. you're, you as a person is inspiring for the group. So, right. Which is a higher level of, of, of leadership, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The ideally within a, a business organization, you should be hitting levels three and four. Wow. That's, yeah. that's interesting to know, you know, because going back to the same thing, man, like if you're not building yourself, you're not developing your skills, like, if you are a business owner or you aspire to be a business owner, have a big organization or something like you're not going to be able to grow that if you're not willing to be that leader and inspire others and, and motivate others to, to yeah. reach that higher level of performance for them as well. You know, because like, yeah, you can own a business, but if your people stop performing at the, at the same level that you want them to perform or mm -hmm. your level, like there's, is like Andy Frisella, you know, like he was talking the other day about, 
uh, somebody was talking about how neat is the, the, the gym that they have in the headquarters, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. every single time that there's somebody that using the dumbbells, for example, if they don't put them back in the way that they found it, he never invites them again. No, because it's just uh, patient, that attention to the details yeah. that every single one of his employees follows. And mm -hmm. that's why they have such a great company. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is amazing, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned something very important to you, man, uh, about, um, well, actually, I wanted to ask you this because okay. uh, I know a lot of people and I, and I see you, man, and I know that you're someone who is very, very, uh, you put your family first too, you know, like everything you, like, I, it's hard to see people, especially in the entrepreneurship world, that they mm -hmm. can find that balance. But okay. uh, when I see you, man, I love how you have that balance between you and your family. And we talk about this a lot, you know, like balance is okay. bullshit, is an illusion. But yeah. How do, you, how do you manage to actually be present? Let's call it like be present, man, because that's a lot of stuff that we struggle with, like being present with our families or our friends mm -hmm. when we are so focused in building a business. So I, I actually saw this really detailed the other day. Uh, Jessica Dennehy, you know, who she is from the Apex Group. Yeah. She, she posted, a, it was either yesterday or day before, and I think it was an Instagram story, but she talked about, you obviously your number one priority is is your your close ones your 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 family your blood your your family that you have you know put together those, those people that you live and die with regardless of where you're going to be um you know those people are going to be with you right but i say i shouldn't say but but what i'm what i mean is at any given time though what's what's the first priority right here and now like if if it's if it's game time, if it's nine to six or eight to eight or whatever time that you you're going to operate your business, if I spent three hours in the middle of my day instead of talking to clients, instead of building a business, instead of doing the particulars I had to put my hands on, and I spent the whole time on the phone with my wife or spouse, girlfriend, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you have, um, I would be missing what I should be doing. And right. then what happens is that work still has to get done. So if I go home. And it's seven, eight o'clock where I'm supposed to be watching a movie or having dinner with my family. I've got to do the work. So I've missed, I, I've got my balls and the, you know, I got my, my ball in the wrong court here. Right. So it's a matter of focus on what needs to be done right here and now. So this week I've actually, I'm actually really tired. Um, Cause I've been putting a lot of hours into finishing up a digital course where I have to make videos and I'm sure you, you do these videos. <laughs> Those are sometimes, fun, you know, man. Yeah, it's sometimes, and this is a pre-recorded deal. So I've got to make sure it's right. So I'm making the video, redoing stuff, editing, all that kind of stuff. And I've gone every day for a week uh, up till midnight. But what I did though, was I didn't want to alienate uh, my family. So the times I had to be doing the video, I just had my son with me. Right. So he can come to, he, he comes to the office with me every Friday. His school doesn't have, he's not in school on Fridays. His school doesn't, he only does money through Thursday at his school. So he comes to the office with me on Fridays. So even over the weekend, as I'm doing these, these videos, he was with me. So, wow. and then I can take a break. We can hang, we can talk, we can have lunch together. Uh, I still had dinner with the family because I can edit the video and not make the video while I'm still there. So you can kind of mix that process up. You know, Ziegler talked about that is you can kind of mix, mix some of that together. I can do something minor or something small while I'm still around the family. Um, another thing that I do is I try to involve them if I can as much as possible. So um, I'm taking my son who's eight Mason is his name. I'm taking him to the apex live event on. Oh, wow. Yeah. I asked Ruby, I don't know why I thought of it, but I, I text Ruby. I'm like, Hey, do you think it'd be okay if I brought Mason? And he got it cleared with, um, with Ryan and Amy. They're like, well, yeah, if you don't care about the language, he can come. But then, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he, he listens to the rewire podcast. He listens to crushing the day. And we do that in the morning in our short drive to his school. And so he knows these people, he, he enjoys them. So that's a cool, a cool thing for him. <laughs> I actually that's emailed awesome, his, man. yeah, I emailed his school saying that I, I would be taking him out of school that day. And I said, you should actually consider this a field trip because this is going to be a learning experience. <laughs> No, that's awesome, man. But and for you guys listening, if you don't know what's Apex, Apex is our, our network of entrepreneurships where me and Brian, we belong to and it's something that actually has impact our lives very, very deeply. It has, I mean, actually, you know what, let's share a little bit about, 
not, not many, 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 maybe not talking about Apex, but okay. uh, how important it's been for you and where you are right now, man, because like, like it's been a couple of years and you start like ramping up your business and now you have your own brokerage and all that stuff. But yeah. uh, how important it's been for you to have a network of powerful people that can guide you and sure. that can give you the different keys to get where you are right now? Yeah, what I enjoy about, uh, enjoy about that is uh, the mix the mix of people that you talk to. So um, I have always been a top performer in the organizations and I've always been close with the leaders in each organization, but you're, uh, you're just in that group. It's just that small sphere. So it can get a little incestuous in terms of you're talking the same language, you're speaking the same language, but you don't have a lot of outside perspective. Right. So um, I always lamented not doing the born to win when Zig was alive and in Texas. So he passed away, I think in 08. And I never did that, even though I, I've always saw the stuff. So when I got a chance to do Apex and to start getting more involved in the different levels, I, I really wanted to take it. Cause I, I think that the, a lot of the skills and things can kind of come from that umbrella, you know, cause yeah. I know uh, Ryan Steuben was in Zig's program. Um, Keith Kraft, who's an influencer on, on Steuben. So that, that kind of cascades down. So to me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to really involve myself as much as possible. But the network, what I really enjoy is to get close to and get opinions from people who aren't in insurance, you know? Wow. So uh, you and I have said, you know, have been around each other several times and you're in real estate. You do, you have the brewery stuff. Um, I have two. So I'm on the, the executive level with a coach. Now my coach, Jessica is actually in insurance. However, <laughs> However, she brings a lot of outside and different approach to it. Um, I'm also in a group with uh, Chris Whitehead and Lonnie Robinson, and they're not insurance. One's a digital marketer. Chris is in the construction and uh, remodeling industry. So it brings a different perspective to that. Like, hey, you know, I know we're not in the same industry, but have you thought about this? Because business skills are going to be business skills. Yeah. Sales skills translate all industries, and the business skills are very, very similar too. You might have some okay, my industry, I've got to do this, Well, you don't have to do that. Some compliance stuff like you're in real estate, I'm in insurance, we have licensing requirements. You know, many other industries don't have that, but getting that outside perspective has been, has been the number one thing for me and the support for people that are just cheering you on. Yeah, that's very powerful, you know, but for you guys, listen, what, what Brian is saying right now is key, you know, because you say something very important when you were like in this small group where you were like always a top performer. Yeah, you were surrounded by other leaders, but it was limited, you know, you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't see beyond other opportunities and different perspective. But when you started surrounding yourself with people from different industries is when mm -hmm. everything started changing for you, you know, and I, and I think a lot of people is afraid to get into a network. It's afraid of like, oh, I don't want to talk with this guy because they're not in my industry, but Guys, like you can learn literally from everybody, you know, like, 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 like uh, Brian was saying, our group, there's uh, business owners and entrepreneurs from all different industries. And every time that we gather, gather together, every time we are in a, in a meetup, every time that we're talking business, life, family, even fate, whatever you want to talk about, like there's something new that you learn and you're like, okay, I didn't understand that before. Or, or wow, I, this is a good idea. I can implement it in this part of my business or I can implement this uh, idea on my marketing plans. There's so many things that you can do where you surround yourself with, um, with the right people. So I think that's very important. And for me, like you said, developing their skills and being surrounded with the right people are two of the main things that uh, I'm at least working more in 2021, you know? Yeah. And you get, uh, you know, in any group, you, you kind of start gravitating to people that, oh, you know, you kind of more identify with, you know, so um, a group within a group, you've got those different things that come about. So I'm sure there's guys in the group that you were a little closer to than some of the others, but you still talk to a lot of people. Um, yeah. So I, I've got a handful of guys like that. that we call each other the goons, and, uh, <laughs> but we just, we share ideas. You know, we share ideas. Right. Uh, we, we tease each other. So one of the things that I set a goal, I'm actually, my text is going off right now. So I'm going to say this, the, I set a goal to read more than I've ever read in a year. And I've always been a solid reader. So I wanted to read a book every other week was my, was the wow. pace. That would be the most that I've read 26 books in a year. So I got my stack. So in the corner here, I got my list and started reading and my, who I'm partnering with here, kind of the accountability with is Mike Claudio. Right. Uh, he's a hellacious reader because he's talking about reading a book a week, which I've heard wow. people doing that. I know uh, a couple other guys in, in the group probably read that much a book a week. But um, anyway, so we, we you know, tease them back and, you know, back and forth, keeping each other on pace. 
So yeah. I texted him today and said, hey, I'm a little off pace because I've been doing this training so much. It got me behind, but I'm going to make it up with, because I got some shorter books and some books that are, you know, high, more, more text and bigger margins. So I'll make it up on some of those other ones. And he said, he said, okay, you know, cool. You were teasing, teasing back and forth. He's already read eight books for the year. And we're just, wow. Four weeks into it. Yeah. I told him Dr. Seuss doesn't count. <laughs> no, that's crazy, that man. Count. I mean, I, 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 one day I would love to read that fast, you know, but for me, it's a little bit extra. It's not, yeah. not that I would not make it. I will make it one yeah. day. It's just I have a, a little extra uh, challenges because obviously yeah. English is not my first language, but I don't read okay. in Spanish. You know, I read in English because it helps me develop my, my yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My speaking, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and it is great, you know, like when I see my, when I hear myself doing videos from a year ago, two years ago, it's like, wow, a lot of people is like, dude, you don't sound like English yeah. is your second language sometimes, you know, it's like, wow, that's amazing. But that's incredible. Eight weeks and we've just been a month into the year. That's crazy. Yeah, doing, yeah two books a week. He, he said a lot of them are short. I said, yeah, Dr. Seuss is really short. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. But anyway, man, let's let's switch okay. gears a little bit and let's okay. talk about uh, your brokerage, man, because that's been a great journey for you for the past couple of years, right? So tell us about how you started and how how what that transition for you, man. That, I'm yeah. sure that can help inspire somebody who's trying to level up right now, man. Okay, so I um, my lighting's better on the other camera. I was getting some lighting mess up here. Um, so I got full time in, in November, 2015 to go to, um, to insurance, health insurance is probably my primary market, uh, individual under 65, small company, Medicare. I also do life insurance. I'm, I'm licensed nationally. I do the whole country. That's um, awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah. The, the, what got me in there was, um, I'd been with office max and I was, I was at the largest store. Uh, for them in Dallas, Fort Worth area. And we had gone through a changeover. They went through a merger. They merged with Office Depot. Right. It was all this, I mean, it was like, it's like two different languages being spoken and the, the wow. systems didn't match at all. And there's all kinds of problems. And so I was, you know, going through, Hey, this is a problem. This is a problem. We're trying to, you know, manage through it. And then one day I pull up to the office, I was going to work a, uh, a nighttime. They'd already been pulling. I mean, They'd already been pulling payroll out of stores and things were out of whack. I was the, yeah, I was this, the largest volume office max in the, in my area. And I had the second lowest in payroll. <laughs> I was like, that makes sense. Right. Anyway, after all these weeks of arguing and different changeover stuff, anyway, I, I'm going to I pull up to the office and um, just ahead of me were uh, two district managers and two store managers of, of nearby stores that were in the office depot stores. So I was like, this ain't good. So we go in and we started kind of diving into these system issues and things we were kind of working through. And one of the guys looked at me in my office, in my chair, he's sitting in my chair, looking at me and says, Brian, you should be at your store 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Now huh. I was already driving from Arlington to Dallas, driving 45 minutes one way, leaving before my family got up, coming home after they went to bed. And when he said that, I just kind of, it was just stunned. Yeah. And um, they, you know, they went and hung out a little more and I called my father-in-law and I'd already been recruited by an insurance company. I said, Hey, I think I'm going to, I should switch to this insurance one. And I, we talked about it, talked why he's like, yeah, if you want to do it, you should, uh, I'll support you if you need help, whatever. So I just, it, it was a break. And that was, I felt the weight just fall off my shoulders. And when I got to doing insurance full time, now I was still in, in a brokerage. So there's a little, it's still a framework. Yeah. So it's like you're being self-employed with help. So it's, yeah. I wouldn't say entrepreneur, but maybe I guess is the best word for it. Cause you still have to answer to a couple of, couple of guys. But anyway, I was not going to let it. It's like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm gonna do it flat out. I would just go, yeah. go after it. So that was in the fall of 2015. Uh, I started on my birthday, actually, November 23rd, 2015, and I still wrote a million dollars in policy premium just in to end their open enrollment cycle, just the first, mm -hmm. my first six weeks. Wow. And um, I did, I was the fastest person in their group to build from no, with no book of business to build up to 5 million in premium. I did 6 million in my first four years. That's amazing, man. Yeah. So, um, some people ask me, is that a lot? I said, well, my average premium per, per policy is 5,000 bucks. So right. it was about 1200 policies I wrote in the first four years. 
Wow. Um, yeah, just because I was not going to, I wasn't going to, to, to let it down. I was going to go in and do it, do it right away. And at the end of the first, my first, at the end of my first year, I remember telling my father-in-law, I said, I'm going to make six figures. And he didn't really believe it. Um, and to, yeah, to go, to go well beyond that is, right. Yeah, it, it may it, shit happen. <laughs> yeah, well, he was shocked to he was shocked to realize it would pay that much because they, right. they in in their family, their side of the family, they're very heavy on getting that college degree. And I never went to college. My dad didn't force it. He had his engineering degree, and so did his two brothers. But it wasn't like the, my 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 family put any pressure on what you do or have to do. It was about the person. You know, make sure you're happy, your family happy. Can you do what you want to do? Then go. Yeah, yeah. go. Do anything that won't hurt anybody. Do anything that's not illegal. But my, <laughs> yeah. but their side of the family is so heavy into the college degree that they didn't think that uh, you can make significant money not having had a degree. And that's the entrepreneur thing. Is if you look at the people that are always at the top of the list, the the people that started these companies, those are the ones that truly are, are making the most difference, making the most money. Yeah, it's great to get a law degree and you're okay. You're making good money, or a doctor, you're making good money. But that doesn't it doesn't scale in the same way an entrepreneur can. Yeah, that's kind of like the secure path, I believe, you know, and, and uh, I was talking on our last meetup last week. Uh, I actually mentioned that because there's, there were some people asking, like, how, how do you go from, uh, like, how do you really put yourself against the wall, you know, and like, just, just, just get into the grind and, and just move that transition, you know, just like, leave everything that you don't want to do anymore so you can focus on your business, you know, and, it, and there was different opinions, all of our great, great opinions, but, you know, man, I, I, I like to, say things straight and, and I stand up and I was like, you know what, here's the thing, man. If you don't feel like, like, like you cannot just wait for that right moment to start doing stuff. You cannot just mm -hmm. wait till the stars align for you so you can make yep. a decision or like God gives you a sign. I mm -hmm. mean, the fact that you're already thinking that should be your sign to move and start doing something for yourself. Sure. If you want to yeah. do something on your own, you know? Yep. And then if you don't feel like doing it, why in the, like put yourself against the wall, you know, like, I wouldn't be where I am today if I wouldn't put myself against the wall, you know, yeah. for me, my wall was pack your shit and leave, you know, for me, my sure. wall was like yeah. spending a couple of years, even illegally here when I was trying to fix everything, all my paperwork and all that stuff. Yeah. But that was my against the wall. If I wouldn't put myself in those positions intentionally, because I didn't intention it, you know, I couldn't yeah. just buy a flight ticket and go back to my country, but I did it, <laughs> you know, because yeah. I wanted something more for my life. But, but, it sounds like you pretty much is the same too, you know, like you intentionally did not fuck this. I'm going to do it, you know, and I'm going to put myself against the wall and I'm going to wait the life to, for life, put me against the wall so I can start taking yeah. action, you know? So it's something I really admire about you, man. Yeah. I, yeah, I appreciate it. The, um, well, I, I knew that I, I knew that I did not want to be in that, in that position of, you could do a lot of things right. Uh, it, it, it's such an odd game in the corporate world. You, you could do a lot of things right. You can have, they give you a list of 10 things and they're like, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, home run. All this stuff is cranking and they'll go to the one thing that's not awesome or the one thing that you're not doing well. So, yeah. so you know, we were, we were doing um, fantastic in sales. I had a great turnover record, I had a great high profitability. I always managed really strong to a P&L. That's what I kind of learned from coming up. The people that mentored me in the retail space was really diving into P&L and they would come in and go, oh, well, this is, doesn't, you know, this planogram is not right. I'm like, who gives a shit about planograms? Right. Customers <laughs> buying stuff. That's what matters. But yeah, that, that's the corporate world for you. So when I, when I got out of the corporate world and go and like, okay, I, I don't have any, you know, I don't have that yoke on my shoulders right now. Right. So uh, I just went to the guys who are the top performers and they said, okay, Brian, this is how you do it. Obviously, you know how to sell. You've been doing sales. So this is how we sell here. Okay if that worked for you and you've been number one, then let me do it too. And then you find your flavor, you find what, you know, your, your vernacular, your way that your approach is. And well, if it worked for him, it can work for me. So right. same, same thing. And then I took those. So I did that for two years with them um, being just the, the uh, you know, salesperson and they written and they saw that, okay, you've, you've managed a team before. Let's give you an opportunity to manage a group here. So uh, I did that as well. So I, I built up a team and I don't want to use the clubhouse six figure, whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, it was, you know, my sales guys on my group, we sold over 10 million in premiums. It was an eight figure unit. Right. Whatever you want to say. Anyway. Um, 
but it was cool to take that, still make my good money from my own policy and then just teach those guys, same thing. Cause right. I had been teaching, you know, I had done that in the retail framework, but like you kind of, you kind of operate in a, in a channel in the retail world. You don't, you don't have that. There's a safety net, you know? Right. Um, even in commission retail, you still have a floor that you're required to pay them. So those guys had that floor, whereas insurance, you sell nothing, you get paid nothing. Right. And so it was cool to say, to, to kind of, to really blend the two that, that self guidance from being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and still have that, those, those skills I learned from leader, leading the, the commission people in retail and push those two together. So it was, it was awesome to, to build guys up to where they make their own six figure income. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I think that's sure that's rewarding, man. You know, that's one of our goals too, right now. Like once with the real estate part, we're trying to partner with other real estate agents and, mm-hmm. and giving all the tools, you know, like I'm building the systems, I'm building the funnels, the chatbots, like yeah. the follow-up sequences. It's taking me a couple of weeks, but I'm building all that. So when we start recruiting uh, real estate agents, you know, like, yeah. Hey, here's everything you need. This is the scripts that you can use. These are the ads that are being converting. It's all yours. Just do the work follow Mm -hmm. up with your leads and you're going to see the results, you know? Yeah. I, I, that's been my, that's been some of the last 11 months since getting an apex. That's been my next transition is I I did leave that office because every time I added someone, I added cost and the reoccurring that cost was a big lag in the way they had it set up. So I'm like, okay, I'm adding all these additional costs. Yes. My team is getting better, but the more guys I add, the less I personally sell. So a lot of things was just averaging out to be the same. So I did the math. I said it would make more sense. Plus I was driving from Arlington to North Fort Worth. So once again, my, these big long drives, why can't I just work in Arlington? Well, I can work (laughs) in Arlington by having my own spot. So uh, we found an office here. um, I partnered with my buddy and we were able to add training to the groups. Now we have a training platform and we're taking that into further, uh, even further along. We, we, we started for licensing training. So I go, okay, I give up a team, but I'm, I'm going to replace that, that loss of revenue with during this piece. So now I'm just, okay, let's add this, this, that, that will keep that together and then uh, start to scale, scale those, those, that piece up as well. But I learned that that came from learning the apex stuff because right. the old, office was call, 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 call. They weren't generating a lot of traffic from the newer type stuff, you know, whereas it's funnels or organic, organic marketing, social media marketing. They were doing the old hat stuff, you know, right. events and phone calls and in-person meetings. Whereas, um, you know, you can generate a lot of that traffic through the other channels and it's far more efficient. Absolutely. Which, you know, in this modern world is everything about innovation, you know, and that's Mm -hmm. your industry, man. It's not an easy industry. There's a lot of competition, there's a lot of stuff going on, but the fact that you've been doing all this, you start your own brokerage, now you're having all this training, now Mm -hmm. you're doing all this video to help other insurance sales agents to grow their business too and all that stuff. It's only proof that, I mean, if you are, you have that innovation in your mind and you have the skills and you don't make the excuses, you can just change the entire face of an industry. And hopefully that's what you're going to accomplish at some point, you know? Well, um, I haven't seen, so the, uh, the insurance industry is still fairly old style. Like, yeah. uh, as was a friend of mine who I was working with on the Medicare stuff before I went full time into insurance and he's been doing it for maybe a, over a decade, maybe 10, 12 years done very well. You know, he's making between 80 and a hundred thousand a year doing solid for himself, but he does in-person meetings. Right. And it's not just the one hour or 45 minutes you're with someone. You got to get there and you got to go to the next appointment. So realistically, each appointment is between is, is two hours, maybe three hours if you consider all that stuff. So he can touch three to five people a day where I can touch a person an hour on the phone. Wow. Uh, so I didn't have to. I, so that's one great lesson I learned from them because they were very, they all worked over the phone. I can sell nationally. So he, given that, old style that's still going on in insurance COVID was a was a a a shipwreck in a lot of ways to these guys who are used to we call it a kitchen table presentation i sit across from the jones family and we figure out what to do so by putting those skills in apex early and then when COVID hit none of that changed and i didn't have to you know go rethink how i did stuff i actually counseled my friend who had been used to that kitchen table presentation and how to do it over the phone. 
So we had right. several calls where I was walking them through how to properly do that. So uh, that's a bit of forward thinking. And that's where the, you know, this day and age is now is developing those platforms to make it, to make it much easier for customers to work with you. I know. And I, and I have seen the funnel that you created to make, even provide a better service to, to your clients, man. That's amazing because you have everything in one place for them just to be easy to show their insurance card and like, yeah, that's that, amazing. Um, yeah. The, uh, yeah, I got phone sites and I was thinking of how, um, internet leads are made. I mean, I'm sure you guys get internet leads. You can buy in the, in the real estate space too. guys who are people that are shopping on the internet. Yeah. yeah. So typically those internet leads are their top funnel, meaning it's name and email and you've got to contact them to move them along the process. Uh, what I wanted to do was the reason people are shop online is they want to see a price. They want the information. They want to see the price. That's what, that's why I think that's why Zillow was kind of a train, a bit of a wreck to the, the, the real estate industry is yeah. because they showed everything, right? Yeah. That was, a, you know, kind of fairly new. So I want to do something similar in insurance to where, why we have to hide all this stuff? Why do we have to make the customer call us? They're, if they're online at 10 o'clock or midnight, they're obviously outside normal hours. Why would I force them to make a phone call happen between nine and five Monday through Friday when they're online at night or on the weekends? So why not match that? So I, I wanted to put as much information as I could uh, but it, you can't just, unfortunately in the health insurance world, you can't just go, here's health insurance prices because it might not fit for that person. So I developed a, a very short questionnaire that puts them into the right plan. So when I get a name and phone number, I know what plan they've already basically picked for themselves or what have been recommended. So wow. I'm getting less people than a top funnel would be. But when I talk to those people, I, I'm, I'm enrolling every other one or, or two out of three because they've already seen what they I'm the only person that showed them a price and are recommending something that fits for them. Wow. That's amazing. You know, and like, and that's a great example because I know a lot of people and, and I'm sure this happens a lot in insurance too. Like, Oh, I have this shit ton of leads. Like, yeah, but if you're not converting any of those, man, like what's the point of having a thousand leads and you cannot contact any of them. I'd rather have five, 10 leads a day and make sure that I convert half of them, you know? So yeah. that's impressive, all, man. All it takes is one in, uh, in, in what I do and the, the, the if I, and life insurance would be the same way. I'm sorry. If, if, if you got one sale a day, you'd be doing very, very well. And, I, and I'm used to that kind of traffic in a different way. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm gonna do my own thing, let's do a low cost and I'm gonna chase these people down, you know? Yeah. Another Absolutely. Problem with, yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just, that's go another ahead. problem with that, with that top funnel lead is okay. They go to abcinsurance.com, whatever, and they're looking for a price. They put the name and phone number and doesn't give them a price. So they're just going to go to the next website. And then every time they go to a new website, they're generating a lead that someone has bought and then it gets rebought. So they're getting inundated with calls. And as I call them, I'm just one other phone call. So rather than try to chase the people down, be the only one to actually give them a price and my funnel, once it shows them a price, they can even enroll. So I've had several people just do the whole thing. And wow. I just call them in the back and say, Hey, Mr. Jones, you enrolled. <laughs> I'm Brian. You know, I'll help right. you out from here on out. But <laughs> I'm it, sure, the, I'm sure yeah. the first lead you got like that, we're like, oh, so what do I do now? <laughs> but like, who is this guy? Yeah, like yeah. To, to get an application, I'm like, what, who is that? I didn't talk to him. Because he, yeah, <laughs> they went through the entire thing. And then I go back and see the, the phone site lead. I go, oh, well, yeah. But they were shopping on the nights yeah. or on the weekends. So That's I, amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, Amazon, we're, Amazon will do it. Best Buy will do it. You can see a price on, on anything that's transactional. Why yeah. not in the service space? Yeah, that's a great, that's, that's a great idea, man. You know, you're right. A lot of people try to do it all the time. Like, oh, I'm trying to be exclusive. Like, no, man, people is ready, to, especially like you said, online, man. People is with credit card in hand, ready to spend some money. So why are you going to make that process complicated for them? So that's, that's incredible. It's something that you can apply everywhere, man. That's something, you give me some ideas right now. So thank you oh, for we're, that. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it with, um, I'm, I'm working with some Apex buddies. We're, we're, um, we're trying to do something similar for life insurance. Term life insurance is, is very simple to understand. Uh, most yeah. people just, it, well, they call it mortgage protection. Basically, you just get a term life insurance plan for the same amount of your house. It's right. not, not, there's nothing to it. So working on something similar to that. That's awesome, man. But anyway, uh, we've been almost an hour here. I know you have stuff to do. And okay. um, it's been great, man. Thank you for all the information that you have shared yeah, today and, me on. And, and, and all your skills, man. I, I really admire everything that you have accomplished all this time. And, and, and you know your humility to, to, to share with us 
everything that you have done and in the process you. that you have followed. But anyway, man, uh, two last questions. Um, sure. First, where people can find you. You know, what's the best way to reach you out if they want to talk about insurance or maybe about learning more about your yeah. process and how you have built your business? And okay. what will be one last piece of advice you can leave to our audience? Okay, sure. Um, so I am on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, working on a YouTube, uh, but you know, the actual conversational connecting Facebook, uh, my, my personal page is public so, and LinkedIn and Instagram. So that's there. My website is insuranceoftexas.net. And my email is brian at insuranceoftexas.net. But my insuranceoftexas.net website has all the different plans that I, that I ha um, have available. You can get a health quote right through there, life insurance information, uh, actually term life insurance you can get through the website and final expense you can get through the website as well. So nice. that's, that's there if you got any insurance questions. I do also do home auto and commercial for Texas. I mean, everything else okay. is nationwide. Um, advice wise, I, I think the biggest impact for me over the last year is just starting the action when it comes through like me, me people like i'm gonna get information get information get information and they go in that they're in that information gathering mode and they never take that information and do something with it so right. you know in apex we have build the machine the lesson is that week so it's 26 weeks at we the weekly lesson and the idea is you take that lesson and do it so that's yeah all i've done over the last you know year or so is lesson comes in how can I apply that and start trying? And if you can try it, if you end up going in the wrong direction, that's fine. You can get advice from someone and get that corrected if you've done it wrong. But taking action is much better than not taking action at all. If you just continue to take it in, take it in, take it in, and not do anything with it, that's, it's worthless. Yeah, that's, I think that's a very important advice, especially right now that we're just starting the year, man, and a lot of people is trying to learn all this stuff. But mm -hmm. like you said, if you're not implement, I mean, there's no way you're going to see any results. And I would like to add consistency, you know, because it's just not going to happen just overnight. Just because you learn something today, you're going to implement it tomorrow. It's not going to happen right away. So just have to stay consistent, you know, but yeah. yeah. Thank you for that, man. I really appreciate you and uh, appreciate you being in my show, man. I'm excited for uh, sharing this with the world and uh, uh, I will see you next week. <laughs> yeah, you'll be there Thursday. Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah, you and I are both local. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> but anyway, for you guys listening, if you enjoy the show, make sure to share it with somebody, put it on social media, send it an email, tag me or whatever you can do to help us spread the word. And also make sure you leave us a review on iTunes or subscribe to the YouTube channel. So more people can find the show and get access to all this valuable information. I will see you guys for the next episode. In the meantime, be safe, keep working hard and cheers later guys. Later brother. Hey guys, thank you for watching. This show was brought to you by the Marketing Brewing Company, an industry leading marketing provider and coaching firm. If this episode has provided with valuable information for you and your business, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you know somebody who needs to hear this, share it with them, send them a text message, a DM, put it on social media, whatever you can do to spread the word. And lastly, if you're a brewery owner ready to take your business to the next level, make sure you head to marketingbrewingco.com and fill out the form to get started and get your free assessment of your current marketing sales strategies. I will see you guys for the next episode in the meantime cheers